Hi, today is November 22nd, and we're reading Psalm 9, verses 1 and 2, and 7 through 12, and once again in the Contemporary English Version. I will praise, <coughs> excuse me, I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart, and tell about the wonders you have worked. God Most High, I will rejoice. I will celebrate and sing because of you. You rule forever, Lord, and you are on your throne ready for judgment. You judge the world fairly and treat all nations with justice. The poor can run to you because you are a fortress in times of trouble. Everyone who honors your name can trust you because you are faithful to all who depend on you. You rule from Zion, Lord, and we sing about you to let the nations know everything you have done. You did not forget to punish the guilty or listen to the cries of those in need. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, we thank you <clears throat> for your presence and your grace. We thank you for your, your protection and your provision and the safety that we can find in you. We know that this world has trials and tribulations. We know that we are hated for your namesake. We ask that you give us the strength and the ability to stand and the wisdom, Lord Jesus, to be who you've called us to be, to be strong and to not fail to be holy it is only by the power of holy spirit that we are able to withstand the onslaught of temptation and i ask that you just show us the way out when temptation beckons that you show us the escape so we can take it be the light unto our feet lord jesus and direct our paths as we go about our day moving forward with you to the call and the purpose you have that none should perish, Lord, that the whole world should hear, know and receive your love. In your name, I ask this, Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is a little weird. Um, so, once again, we, we need to think about focusing or discovering what, uh, noticing, there's the word, what Christ does in our life and the little things and in the daily things and, and that kind of stuff, knowing all that. We have to be aware that Christ rules forever, was, is, and always will be. There's nothing that catches him by surprise, no choice you make. <clears throat> he knows the choice you're going to make before you make it. And that that's something people really struggle with because then they, they argue there's no free will, but yes, there is because you're the one that makes the choice. Just because he knows what your choice is, changes nothing. You made the choice. Then they argue that, well, if he knows I'm going to do this and he ha can't, you know, um, hold me accountable, judge me for it. But of course he can because we are given our free will to choose him. Now, one would wonder why we choose why it would matter, okay, to choose him. And the main thing and the easiest way for me to put it is because if you're forcing someone to love you, it's not really love and there's no security in it. But if you've cho chosen to love the person, then there's security and there's safety there. The same thing with Christ choosing to give his life for us. He wasn't forced to do it. He chose. He made his choice to die for us painfully to save us. And that makes his love real. So <clears throat> God is not, and this is going to sound kind of funky, but it's Christianese as they say, but God is not a respecter of persons, which means it doesn't matter your race, your creed, your color. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter your, your job per se. I mean, if you're doing a sinful job, obviously once you come to him, you'll have to stop it. <laughs> but you can come to him where you are right now in the midst of your dirtiest, darkest moment most shameful place, most hurtful, painful, darkest hour, you can come to him. You will not be rejected. You will not be turned away. It says, the poor can run to you because you are a fortress. Everyone who honors your name can trust in you because you are faithful. He is faithful to you. He watches over you and he gives you many opportunities to be made right with him, and enter into a relationship with him. So don't miss your opportunity to do that. 
no matter where you are right now, you cannot clean up your life enough to come to him. You cannot cleanse yourself of sin. Only Jesus Christ can do that. And so it doesn't matter where you are, what you've done. Cry out to the Lord. Seek his face. And he will answer you. And he will save you. Tomorrow is the 23rd. We are getting almost to the end of November, which is exciting. And we are reading <coughs> Lamentations, which <coughs> is a pretty intense book. Lamentations 3, 22 through 27. And we'll see you then.